Well, good morning. Um, welcome to the Woolly Felter Studio. I'm starting a little bit early today, just so you've got time to uh, know that we're going live in about, ooh, I think it's about seven or eight minutes now. And you've got time to make yourself a cup of tea, get your slippers on, and um, start to relax into the wonderful world of needle felting. It is magic. And um, I've been doing it with my sister as the Woolly Felters for six and a half years now. And we're still doing it and we're still fascinated by the craft. So I hope today, if you're a beginner or you're an experienced needle felter, we'll be able to share some of our tips with you. So, um, oh, hang on, we've got Kathy Campbell. I can just see you. I've got this wonderful Heath Robinson effect going on here of my phone which is pointing down towards my needle felting pad. Uh, good morning Kathy. how are you? Just about to see your message there. Looking forward to it so am I. So I'm just going to try and log on now to see if I can follow myself. Oh yes I'm on there. Hang on let's turn the sound right down. We don't want any of that. So I can see some of your messages coming in, I think. Uh, uh -huh. Hang on a minute, bear with me. This is all technological stuff. Right, let's turn that down. There we go. So, I'm one half of the Woolly Felters. My name is Judy Bolchin. And um, my sister, Ros Dace, and I wrote Needle Felting for Beginners. And today we're going to go through the book, introduce you to the characters and also we're going to show you how to make little Rosie Rainbow here. Now if you're interested in her and the materials for her, that's all available. I think it's online, an online poster that I put on the Search Press Art and Crafts site. It's all on there so you can actually make your little Rainbow Rosie as well. Oh, we've got some more messages, hang on. Good morning. Oh, Ros. Ah, by the way, my sister is not with me. She's self-isolating in her house and I'm self-isolating in mine. So I'm working solo, but she is on the end of a phone and she's answering your questions. If you've got any technological questions or just comments you would like to make about what's going on, just put them in the comment box. And if you get an answer from Ros, that's the other half. That's um, she's very good at writing and did a lot of the writing in the book and I'm more of a maker. So we're a good team. Anyway, we're on the countdown. We've got five minutes. The kettle's probably boiled. And uh, get those slippers on. Get into a comfy place. Some of you might be trying to needle felt along with me and make Rosie Rainbow. I have pre-prepared stages because it is not a quick craft. And um, so I've done the Blue Peter thing and pre-prepared a few stages to make it a little quicker. So here we are. This is a quite a reasonably tidy nook of the Woolly Felter Studio. Over here we have um, lots of characters from the book. We'll be talking about two books. This is our latest one, which is published in February. And we're very proud of it. And this one we did quite a few years ago now, but it is still going strong and we love it because we love teddy bears. Now that will be my sister. She's just ringing up to tell me if everything is going all right because I don't know. So hang on a minute. Hello. Hi. So how's it going, Roz? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, is the sound all right? Okay, so if I put you on loudspeaker, you can say hello to everyone, yeah? All right, hang on. This is my sister. Hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I hope you all enjoy this demonstration. It's been, um, it's been great doing it, and it's, it's great for beginners as well. So have a lovely time, um, and I'll be answering, answering any technical questions. So see you all in a minute. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Ros. Thanks a lot. Okay. 
Right, so she's in her house and I'm in my house and this lockdown is amazing, isn't it? How we come up with the technology and... Um... Oh, Kathy's saying hello to Rose. Got a few likes coming in. So we're on the countdown now. Two and a half minutes to start time. Um, what else can I tell you about? Uh, yes, we've been, during lockdown, we've been busy um, writing a children's book actually and illustrating it with our little needle felted mice for any of you who are oh thank you thank you Ross do you want to ring off now okay. all right bye that's Rosie gone now if you've been following us out on our Wooly Felters page you'll recognize this little character who is Ickle Mouse and Little Ted. And we be, we love making up stories. So Ickle Mouse has been in lockdown. Well, he's been in isolation, actually, along with me. And um, he's been having adventures and doing deliveries and making masks. And you've been following him all along. We love that. We love the link between us and the viewers that, um, that we've created. And so uh, Ickle Mouse is very special. So he's sitting here in his rocking chair watching proceedings. He has his um, smelly vision already if he gets bored. So he likes a little bit of smelly vision. And he's got his, his little jumper if he gets cold. <laughs> so you see, we live in a nursery world really here. Anyway, half a minute to go. Are we all ready? <laughs> okay, I think I'll get started. Well, thank you so much for joining for joining us, um, or me rather. And um, today, this is the first live video I've done, a proper one. And so I'm all a little bit um, nervy about the technology, but it seems like everything's going all right. And uh, today we're going to make Rosy Rainbow who you can hang in your window and she's based on one of the projects in the book and if you want to know um, the instructions for Rosie Rainbow there's a PDF on our Woolly Felters website which is free and you can download it and it gives you all the materials gives you the pattern and then the instructions are all step by step I don't know whether you can see that okay so if afterwards you'd like to go to www.woollyfelters.com, that's our website, you can download that. There's some other free downloadable patterns too. So here we are, Rosie Rainbow. In honour of our NHS staff who are still doing a wonderful job, we're not out of the woods yet with the coronavirus, and also our key workers who have worked all the way through. So I have two of these hanging in my window and a few more other woolly rainbows as well. So we'll be doing that first and that will take about half an hour and then after that I'll introduce you to the book, our new book, and take you through some of the, the facts in it that we, we wrote this book um, with a view to filling in all those gaps that other books don't have. You know, the basic techniques, how to make the shapes, um, help, what do I do if? We, there aren't many books out there that actually tell you what to do if you get a bumpy fold or a lump or a, a stiff bit and a soft bit. And, and this tells you, you know, it troubleshoots in a way. So there's that, joining shapes. Anyway, we're going to go through this book uh, you know, just just slightly to tell you some of the tips we've learnt over the years and I'm going to introduce you to some of the animals so you'll actually be able to see them in the flesh so to speak which is lovely and also our teddy book which I've got some of the teddies here too so these are some of the teddies you can make okay so that would be that and we have a competition um, the competition is to win both books. You will win both books and they will be signed and you'll get a free badge, a felt fantastic badge as well to go with it. And there will be three winners today. Um, all you have to do is to like 
the page, search press page, which is just under the banner at the top, click the little thumbs up sign and then leave a comment in the in the box about either the project, preferably about the book, but it could be about the project or just about, you know, whether you've enjoyed yourself or not. So let's get going. So let's have a look at what we will need to start. This is my box of materials. Um, so we're going to start off by making a core for Rosie Rainbow. It's an inner shape to work on. So in our box we have got core wool. This is a cheap, it's an inexpensive wool. It's not dyed, straight from the sheep, washed and combed. And um, it's not as expensive as the coloured wool we use. So it's good for making a corn inside because you use quite a lot of it. And then we bind that with wool. Any old yarn you can use, doesn't matter if it's completely wool or a little bit of acrylic or whatever, whatever you've got in your crafty stash. Then we've got all the colours, the rainbow colours, and I've got a little bit of white there. So these are, I mean, you don't have to have the exact colours, but the wool is important. It has to be a coarse wool. Merino wool doesn't do the job. Well, it will do the job, but you won't get as nice a finish and it'll take you forever. You know, you'll grow old while you're needle felting with merino wool. This is Norwegian wool and it comes from norwegianwool.co.uk. Fantastic range of colours. Lovely ladies, mother and daughter who um, run it. So, um, And I think they've put together rainbow packs so you can buy a rainbow pack of wool to do this project. And I think I think they're also donating some money to the NHS on each pack, so that's lovely. A little bit of white wool. What else have we got? We've got the eyes. They're four millimetre little eyes, and they've got like a little wire bit sticking out. That's the bit that pokes into the head to keep them secure. So we've got the eyes. We've got just a little bit of uh, embroidery cotton for hanging. And I think think that's it in our materials box but of course we also need our tools that's very important so here this base is actually foam and it's covered with hessian we find foam is brilliant and you can use an old car sponge you know you can um you can use anything we used um old cushion pads cut up when we started and they were fine but over the years we found that um, they disintegrate quite a lot and the little bits of foam get into your character. So we now cover them in hessian and this is a very posh hessian. You can use the old brown stuff or you can use potato sacks or rice sacks. This is um, just so that you can see it's a lighter colour. So that's your foam pad. That's to stop the needles from breaking. And um, this is my pin cushion. This is in the book, this pin cushion. So this has all the tools. So here we have the needle we're going to be using today. This is a 40 triangle needle. It's got quite a long shaft and it's very fine. And because we're working on something small, this is brilliant. We use this needle for most of our projects really. If we're working on anything bigger, we use a thicker needle. I won't go into all the gauges and thicknesses and what they do so we've just keeping to this one needle today for this project to make it simple for you so that's that one and then if by any chance you find your needle breaks a lot because we're working with a tightly tightly uh, tied core then i would go on to this which is a slightly thicker needle it's 38 gauge and it's got a shorter shaft so it won't break but we'll keep that one just in case Okay, over here we've got scissors, nice pair of embroidery scissors is good. And we've got a braddle, which is quite a lethal looking weapon. And this is for making the hole in the body for the eyes to go in. Okay, so we'll keep that there. And then this is, this is um, a multi-needle tool, which you can use if you want to. I, I don't use this at all really, but some people do and get on with it really well. I find that I use one needle or I use this clover tool 
which you can get online. It's called a clover felting tool. It's got a locking mechanism. When you unlock it, this spring-loaded thing goes back and then you can needle felt the wool. Love the noise. So when you're working on the, on a core or um, a ball or something like that or a face shape, you can actually speed up the felting process because you're using five needles. Okay, so that's that. So we'll put that over there for now and let's get started. I always try and keep my needle in top right hand corner so I don't lose it. This is what we're making. And the first thing we're going to do is make a core, an inner core for this shape. When you're needle felting at this, if it was very small, I wouldn't make a core, but at this size, to avoid using all this expen more expensive coloured wool, I'm going to make a core out of the cheaper wool. And this is the core I've made. And I'll show you how to do this, because although it looks easy, I had quite a time making a sausage-like core, because it kept coming undone. So what I did... If you're making a ball like that, it's easy. You just roll the wool around and you wrap it in wool. But when it's a long thing, this is the core wool. It, smell, it smells a bit. It's cheaper wool. It's um, unbleached. It's uncoloured. And it's, it's combed into a roving. This is called a roving, this length. And um, because it's not bleached or coloured or anything, it, it's washed, but... It still has that smell of sheep, which I quite like, so that's all right. So what we're going to do to make this length that we want, we want like a long sausage. I'm going to tie knots in this core wall, like so. I hope you can see what I'm doing. That's it. And the aim of the game is to make a core that has no air in it, because air is actually the sort of like the nemesis of needle felting. All the time you're trying to get rid of the air, you're trying to stab the walls together, bind them together to get rid of that air. Otherwise you're just needling fresh air and it takes forever. So you see I've got that much so far is knotted. I'll do one more I think. Let's have a look. Get that through there. And last knot really tight. And then tuck that end down and then I'm going to just wrap this knotted section tightly. Whoops. Just fiddly. Control the wall. It's good that it's live though because you can see I can't cheat. I can't say here's one I made earlier which I will do later. <laughs> but hey here we go. So it's still very tight. Tight as you can to get all the air out then you're sort of giving yourself a chance to get ahead of the game you can just roll the Norwegian wool and um, I'm just going to pull that off because we don't want any more wrap that round so we've got the basic shape there and then I will want the yarn don't forget you can use any yarn Hold it and wrap. Tight, tight, tight. Get all the air out. I'm going to go round that way. You can put as much wool on it as you like, just to get all those ends in. I'm not being particularly careful. I'm just trying to sort of lash it down, if you know what I mean, so you don't get any, any airy bits over the top again and round the side there we go right I shall cut that end I'm just going to loop it round and under that bit there hope you can all see and tie it off now see how quick that was now if I just rolled some wool and needle felted it into that shape that probably would have taken me half an hour so it does take a long time needle felting but that's the glory in it because it is very therapeutic the repetitive action of it now at this stage if you look there's our inner core i could have made it a little bit bigger but i didn't so she might turn out a little bit smaller 
Okay, can you see there? Right, so we're now going to wrap this in white wool. You could use core wool if you want to, because you won't see this, but this Norwegian wool is quite nice. You can use any colour. And I'm just gently wrapping, but I'm not making it tight. And this is where we start. So you hold the needle so, and you're going in and out, and you're pushing, whether you can see this, you're pushing the wool into the core. If you have it tight, it won't go in. So keep it quite loose and you just push it in. The needle goes straight in and straight out. If you push it in and bend, it may break. So this is the way. And you see, let's get you a bit more central. Are we central? There we go. And you see now it's beginning to take on the shape of the core. It's not so fluffy, it's all being pushed in. Turn it round as you go, push the wool in. And you work all over the shape until you've attached all this wool. If you run out of wool, you just add another little bit in, cover it up, in we go. So this is when therapy comes in, you see. This is when I must be such a calm person doing all this needle felting. But it is addic both addictive and therapeutic. A lot of people who come to our workshops say that, you know, that they nothing better than a day. Can you see now that's taken on that rounded look? It is very, um, don't worry that it is slightly... Um, puffy at this stage and you've got like dimples we call that the cellulite stage no problems just keep on attaching the wool until you cover the whole thing so I have one that I made earlier as I say it's not cheating but this one I've completely covered now yeah and it's got a relatively smooth finish to it but it doesn't have to be too smooth because we will be covering this in the coloured wool. So we've now got our shape for the face. Now I just want to show you this because at this point in the book we made these shapes into characters such as this one and this one. They're good shapes for faces and you can do amazing selfies and we have great fun with these. And I've done quite a few commissions for different people um, which I love doing. <laughs> so in the book it shows you how to make other faces. This one's just specially for lockdown period really. I know we're coming out of it but I still think we need to support our NHS. So we've got that ready and now we've got to start putting the colour on. So let's find we've got orange for the top beautiful orange colour. I'm pulling off a little bit of wool and I'm going to make it into, there we go, a stripe to go round where I want this to end. I'm putting this line in here. So just press it in. Use the tip of the needle, do you see, to guide the wool in like so. That's it. Stab the rest in. Just use that tip to keep that just a little bit straight. You can always pull it out if you go wrong. And you can take as long as you want over this. Be as careful as you like. And then we have to fill in up here. Take this stripe round. It's just, if you do the edge bit first, you'll find it's easier then to you just fill in the rest. Get this little bit, take time to get this right. And then, okay. So I don't know whether any of you are, are planning to make a rosy rainbow, um, but you can use this technique for playing around. 
making I made some lovely Christmas decorations once like this with pe people's faces and they could hang themselves on the tree you know I made my friends so you can make them into baubles and things like that so as you can see it's gradually filling up I'm working a little bit more wool here placing it on needle felting it in come a little bit closer maybe can you see that there we go I love the sound of the crunch I don't know it's like footsteps in snow to me I love that sound too and the crunch of the needle going in now just to show you quickly I mean at this point it's not very smooth is it and a lot of people ask us how do you get that smooth surface let me just show you on this little bit here how it works. First you have to get the wool really deeply attached so I'm plunging the needle quite firmly and definitely into the, into the centre of the core. But as you get that wool attached and you can soon see it starts to get this what we call the cellulite look. And then that means it's really working, that the wool is attaching to the inner core and it's not bouncing out. And then when you get to this stage, you can pinprick the surface because you've attached the wool. You just want to now smooth out that surface. So you pinprick the surface and you, and you work on one area for quite a time, just pinpricking it and it's very shallow and delicate. The nuances in needle felting are quite incredible. I mean, anyone can, you know, make a, a creature, but to get that professional look and that smooth run from one color to another or one shape to another. So as you can see, whether you can see up close there, where are we? Oh, that's out of focus. Oh, we're going this way. That's it. I don't know whether you can see it's getting smoother there. That's the finish we want. So in this way, you finish the orange bit and then the next colour is yellow, which is quite a large bit if you look, because this contains her nose and ears and everything. So that's a longer piece. So your line will come down to about here. I'm just pulling the wool out here. So the line will come down to about there and you'll needle felt that in and needle felt the whole thing. And keep going down with the different colours, needle felting them in until you end up with something that looks like this. Yeah, we can see that. So now let's put that one over here. So now we've got the completed base shape slightly fatter isn't it than this one but um oh we can have a fat rosy rainbow <laughs> plump so now we've got to start thinking about the features in the pattern i've given you on the pdf which is a free pdf on our website www.woollyfelters.com you can download this for nothing there's a nose and ears so you can see we'll be making the nose and the ears and they're quite small when you're doing a face we've found over the years that it's better to keep the, the features quite simple and straightforward and stylized it's it's our look you know we tend I tend I can't draw very well so everything I draw is a cartoon so everything I make is a cartoon so she's become a cartoon but it's quite a stylized look and we quite we quite like that look so to make the nose I'll show you one that has been made. This is what you're going to make. This is the little nose. And this will settle on there like so. Do you see what I mean? Now, if you're making a character, what you do is make the core first, the body or whatever it is. Then you make everything else and you attach it to the core. 
So if she was going to have arms, I'd make the arms and attach them. I'd make you never make the whole thing at one go because it's just too difficult. So you make all the body parts and then you attach them to the to the basic core that you've made the body or whatever or the face. So to make the nose, put her down there. I need some yellow wool. Now this is getting quite small now. I mean we're working quite small. I hope you can see on here what I'm doing. So I'm just going to needle the wool into the pad, not too deeply, quite delicately. And what I'm doing is knitting this wool together so that it goes from being a piece of fluff to actually a sort of like a, a little mat. It's all binding together like so. Now I can peel it off gently. Do you see it's not quite so fluffy now and we've flattened it down a bit. Turn it over and continue. This is how you make sort of flat things, ears and particularly these noses. Alright, so we've got this little flat piece. Now we're going to fold it in half. See it's already beginning to look like a nose. And we're going to needle felt, this will be the bridge of the nose, a little bit there. And we're going to bend that bottom bit up for the bottom of the nose, so you end up with the nose. This is the attaching loose fibres, you'll attach it with this. So that we just needle up the bridge, that will firm it up. All you're trying to do is firm up this bridge, because you don't want it to go flat when you put it on the face. So I'm just needling it. Turn it over. Keep these loose ends fluffy. You don't want to needle those. That's the attaching fibres. I hope you can see what I'm doing. There we go. See how it's beginning to take on the nose look? So for any nose you're doing, I would start off like this. If I was making a larger figure and doing realistic Features. I'll just show you Boris over here. He's popped in to say hello. Can you see Boris? There we go. This is a larger thing that you can make, you know, when you've been needle felt in a few years. Um, you can actually really control the wall. But he's actually got, I made the nose in the same way, and then I've added two little nostrils either side. I've added cheeks, I've added eyebrows, and, you know, this heavy eye over the eye bits so um yeah he's lovely i haven't got try, i've made trump too but i've had so much controversy over showing trump that i've given up so um it's just boris on show today stand up boris so features keep them as simple as you can not too many folds because people start looking like trolls and gnomes if you put too many folds in so there we've got the nose then we open it up, open up the fibres, place it on Rosie, do you see? And then needle felt it. So I'm just attaching it with those fibres. I would spend probably quite a long time doing this, getting the fibres to flow in, but we haven't got too much time. There we go. And all these loose fibres around here, they all needle felt in so it becomes nice and smooth, as a face should be. Okay. Okay, normally I would spend probably another five minutes just getting that nose right, but we'll go on to the eyes because you just want to know the techniques really. Right, for the eyes, I didn't show you that we're going to be using a little bit of this uh, glue here, yeah? We're going to make some indentations for the eye socket, so you just repeatedly needle round and round where you want the eyes to go. And it makes a sort of indentation, eye socket. Okay, and then 
I'm going to make a hole. Oh, that's painful, isn't it? Now, what did I do with the eyes? Here we are. Now, I get these online. Amazing craft do them. They do teddy bear eyes. And we want the glue. And I'm just going to poke uh, inside the glue. Get a little bit of glue on the end. You know what you who's like. It'll be running all over the place. Pop that in there. Press it. And the other eye. Try and get them equal. Oh, once they get a face, it's quite disturbing. Whoops. Oh dear. Right. <laughs> Live videos. Don't you just love them? Okay, another bit of glue. Glue in there. So there we go, the two eyes. She's got a bit of a hook nose, but we can we can take that down. See, this is where the sculpting begins, isn't it? The sculpting, you, you can sort of sculpt the wall because everywhere you're poking will shrink. And uh, all right, so we have our eyes. Hello, Rosie. When I'm looking back at you, it's a bit disconcerting. Especially if you're making little mice. There we go. Okay, so we've got the nose in place. Now we're going to put on the mouth, okay? Next job. So we want some red wool. And you take a very fine... Let's take these away. Very fine piece of red. Just... Can pull this wool into sort of a very fine thread. I don't know whether you can see how thin that is. This is going to make the smile. Let's put that back in there. Right, let's go. So I'm just pushing it in using the needle to pull the wool into the smile shape. Being quite definite in where I'm putting the needle, where I'm pushing it in, because I want the smile to be as even as, as possible. It's quite a big smile on this one. And yet they're all different. I can't make two things the same, which sometimes is a problem, but most times it means that everything is unique that you make. No two the same, as they say. Like so relatively um you could leave it at that if you wanted to you could bring the smile right up and have a great big smile but rosie has red lips so the top lip is two little triangles that you create so i'm just using the tip of the needle again to guide that wall and push it in where i want it to go into the triangle shape. So this is one side of the lip. It's not just a sort of da 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 da. It's really quite definite where you're putting that wall. There we go. I don't think I mentioned at the beginning that this, this is supposed to take half an hour and we're already half an hour in. So it might take a little longer. And then after that, we're going to be talking, I'll show you about the book, tell you about the competition, because you can win, three people will be able to win both of our books. Signed copies, no less. And um, I'll be sending those out, plus a free badge. So just while I'm doing this second triangle, so bear with me. I hope your coffee's not getting cold. I hope you're not switching off. This is, right, so we're getting the two lips. It's attention to detail in the end, I find, and that does take time. So this is a very rough guide. I would spend more time doing this, but we've got the top lip in place. And then the bottom lip is another little bit of red. Roll it into a little ball and just put it under. See? Under the smile line. And that makes the bottom lip. Use the needle tip again. Be careful though. You don't want to stress it too much or it might break. 
if you're careful you can keep your needles for months and uh, there we go when you first start you might break a few but as you go on you get to know how to straight in straight out straight in straight out a little bit of a twiddle to get the ends and that's it so yeah I would spend a little bit longer on this but you've got the idea and it's quite simple it's it's not a great trauma to do you know a lot of people say oh I can't do lips well take it slowly again the heart I'm doing one side of the little heart first so it would be this side I'm just making a sort of little circle at the top half circle twiddle poke get those ends in and then another little can you still see but I have to keep checking every now and again to make sure you can I'm not wandering off I said to Roz my sister I said ring if I keep wandering off the pad or you can't see me or you can't hear me and she hasn't rung yet so we must be doing something right anyway while we're on how's everyone doing with lockdown some I know some of you have had to keep working you know you key workers and you um, nurses I mean I've been in the glorious position of having probably two months of being able to do absolutely anything creative I want I've got all the things I need to use here my sister on the end of the phone we've used technology till it's coming out of our ears to work together and and we've produced a children's book which is lovely and um, we've done commissions and we've been posting every day posts on our woolly felters Facebook page we've got a little little band of mice who are in isolation and they have adventures and tell their stories and anyway there we go we'll spend more time on that but I haven't got time at the moment so the next thing is the hanger which just a bit of embroidery cotton I do this before I put the top knot on because uh, obviously the top knot will hide uh, mm-hmm here we go can't thread the needle usual story there we go threaded put this on before the top knot because it will hide the top knot will hide any um, knots or bits there we go just cut that so I'm just going to take this through a couple of stitches So you've got the hanger, okay, and then a little bit of red or whatever colour you want, you know, you don't have to use red, but red's quite nice. But this time, just leave it as a top knot. Do you know what I've forgotten? Do you know what I've forgotten? I've forgotten to put the, the ears on. She can't hear a word I'm saying. Anyway, let's put quickly, because we're running out of time a little bit the ears. The ears are made in a similar way to the nose. This is one finished one. Little bit of wool working on the pad but this time you make using the needle you make a sort of semicircle which is the actual ear and then this fluffy bit is for attaching. Whether you can see that coming on So keep doing that, turning it over every now and again until you've created the little ear. So here's one I made earlier. Splay out the fibres. Come on, Rosie. Now you can listen. Now with the ears go top of the ear to the eye line. That's the usual rule. And in it goes. Get the top in first. And then curl it round a little bit and just go into the inner ear there. 
So now you're just needle felting all these loose fibres in. Okay, so you've got your ear. If you want it to lie flat a bit, just needle it back a little bit. There we go. So thinking she has the other ear intact, there, hang on, there is our rosy rainbow all ready to hang up with her twin who's a little bit better made because I took more time but hey that's rosy rainbow the pdf is available on our website www.woollyfelters.com this is it you just press on the pdf sign and you can download it and you get that for free and all the materials are there and other downloadable things we've got on there as well just to show you before we talk about the book now you've got all that lovely rainbow wool you might want to think about making um what was it i was going to show you i think it's fallen on the floor hang on a minute uh can't find it it's gone right so much for that one um uh, oh i was going to show you oh here we are this little character is another rainbow rainbow willy rainbow roger whatever we call him and this one is worked on a polystyrene ball and there's a project very similar to this in the book making a rabbit and it shows you how to attach your wool to a polystyrene ball, how to make arms, ears and whatever. So you can make these little characters as well, which are lovely, really fun to do. So that's another idea with your rainbow wool. And also, whoops, there he goes. If any of you are wet felters, this is um, a wet felted rainbow that I've had in my window now. So um, same wool. You just wet felt it, uh, which is a different technique, but I thought you might like to see that. Oh, hang on a minute. My sister is ringing. Something's going wrong. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. The face. What, the face of... Okay, yeah. Will do. Okay, bye. That's my sister telling me, and it's a good idea... This is one of the projects in the book. Okay. And you can see she's got the similar nose. She's got the eyes put in. It's the same technique. Um, hang on. There we go. The same technique. She's got some lovely uh, Wensleydale, dyed Wensleydale hair on here. But it's a very simple face. You know, I mean, we haven't got eye bags and jowls and things and and it is quite a, an effective look so we've got that one and this is another one well, I've turned the shape upside down so she's got a bigger chin <laughs> hang on there we go she's got a little hat and it's lovely it's great fun embellishing these having great fun with them um so in the book it will show you how to make the neck and the shoulders um, and how to attach the hair and things. So that's quite lovely. So we'll put those back. And then of course, can't forget the gents, because there are men out there who love needle felting. This is actually, um, looks rather like an ex-boyfriend of mine, which is a little bit concerning. But um, hey, the professor. OK, so you can do the men, the glasses are made out of wire and uh, that's the face project. Just to tell you too, I'll put him back there, for all you Ickle fans, this is our little mouse who's been in isolation, Ickle Mouse and Little Ted, and he's been um, telling stories all the way through lockdown and doing deliveries and making masks and being very, very inventive. Um, and he's been here. He's really enjoying meeting you all. He's told me to tell you that. Um, so I'm not sure what his adventures is tomorrow. I think he's doing a bit of watercolouring tomorrow. So, um, But he's having a good time over here. There we go. So now let's talk about our new book. Oh, well, it's not new. It was done in uh, published in February. 
but this is part of the competition what you'll be getting so you'll be getting a copy of our first book which is how to make little needle felted teddy bears and this is just stock full of teddies if anyone's in love with teddies this is the book for you and somewhere around here i've got where did i put it a little basket full of teddies here they are just here right these are some of the teddies from the book whether you can see them we've got a little ballerina and we've got a little circus bear we've even got an artist bear here and you can make all these bears we give you the pattern to make the basic bear there's a little bear making a, a cake a baker bear and we've even got a married couple over here looking very smart so those are all the bears you I think there's about 40 odd bears in the book that you can dress and do, do different ones so they're really sweet that's our how to make little felted teddy bears chock -a block oh by the way I should give you a picture this is the most important picture of all can you hang on see that this is Ross and I this is me I'm the one talking the gobby one and this is my sister and she's on the end of the phone answering all your comments at the moment so if you've got any technical comments please do um, ask her and this book we've um, it's been quite a mission really for a long time we've thought that there isn't a thorough needle felting for beginners book that takes you on a journey right from the beginning hang on a minute um, right through what is needle felting we start off with um, what you need the walls the felting needles we show how to make a hessian covering for your pad um, what's what tools you need I mean we don't we don't believe in spending a lot of money on our makes we make do amend as much as we can um, basic techniques oh everything making all the shapes how do you make the shapes how do you join them together you can have a jointed teddy bear um, thinking big and then this is features a little bit about features how to put your your animal face in very fine work that is um, let's see and this is where it starts now it's a very simple project and it's worked on a cookie cutter so this is the product and it's really pretty and it doesn't take a long time and I've done this with my grandchildren because you've got the cutter to protect their fingers so that's the very first project so I think most people could start with that one and you can use different you can use look gingerbread men you can make a little garland of gingerbread men there and then we work move on to working on a polystyrene base as i mentioned here's bunny there he is and they're really sweet you know and it's really easy to do and you don't use a lot of wool either so that's the next project something quite simple and you work through the book and it will give you an alternative after each project so you can go on and make a little cat or a mouse as well with using the same techniques and then oh there's our pin cushion there's our pin cushion gone here we go and it works i love these we do lots of workshops with these they're very popular um, i think here yeah. and there's some alternatives here um oh this is one of my favorites hang on where is the alternative this one this one here i just love i just love these little bunnies and they're very cute i mean they're just little sort of cones with heads on and ears you know they're nothing special but they have such character so that's another one there where's where is that one i just showed you there he is birds birds are so popular and how to make those legs you know those realistic little legs 
we show you how to do that because I, I always wondered how to do that and I've worked out a way of doing it nobody else seems to do it the same way but there they are and then how to make the beaks and there's your alternatives so there's 12 projects 128 pages but there's also 28 other ideas for you that you can use the same technique but um, make a different animal. So here we've got the panda. This is Ross's project. She loved doing this. Look, look at that face. And then the alternative is a brown bear with a baby. Both got babies. Um, and then little, our little rabbit. Here he is. There we go. Roving rabbit with his little backpack of goodies. He's got carrots in there. Can you see? and things and that's teaching you how to sculpt an animal's face put him there and he's got a partner too at the end there she is <laughs> she's got her backpack so they can go roving together um and then oh the mice well if any of you have been following ickle mouse on our website on our woolly felters facebook page rather this is how we made him and it's, we've used, he's got wire legs, if you see here, he's got wire, and a wire tail. So it forms like a little tripod for him to stand up. And then you've got the pattern for the jumper and the scarf as well, because they get cold in winter. So here they all are dancing about. You can dress them up. Look, this one's very posh. And then we're on to the face that we've just been doing. That's the face and the alternatives there, which are quite interesting. Love doing those because I love selfies, you see. I'm egotist, really. <laughs> and then the shabby sheep. We've got shabby sheep somewhere. Here he is. She is, rather. There we go. There's the shabby sheep. <laughs> uh, so we're up to, sorry, <laughs> the playful dog. Oh, and lots of dogs here. Yes, I've got some of these. Hang on, where's the little poodle? She's rather sweet. A little extra one in there if anyone's into poodles. Um, we're very proud of this book. and We're proud of it because the photography is phenomenal. So thank you so much for Mark Davison and Stacey for the beautiful photography because it's so clear. And when you're needle felting, you need to see those details. So, and, the, and the photographs are fabulous. And my nails look quite good in the pictures too, which is quite gratifying. Um, also, we, we show you what to do if you go wrong. And, and uh, it's very confusing when you start. There's lots of different names for things. And it doesn't have to be confusing. It can be relatively easy to get started. So the competition, guys, is this. You have to like the search press page. So just under the banner, you'll see that thumbs up sign. Press on that. And you also have to leave a comment about how fantastic this video was and how wonderful the book is. And three of you will be the recipients of um, these signed copies of this book and a free badge. Here we go. A felt fantastic woolly felters badge. We'll get one of those. But on top of that, if any of you would like to buy both books, if you don't win the competition, which would be a shame, um, we're selling them on our website, signed copies, uh, with a saving of nearly £2. That's £17 for the two. So the Needle Felting for Beginners is eight ninety nine. No, nine ninety nine. It's 128 pages, uh, 12 projects in there. And the little teddy bears is, I've forgotten how many pages this is, 96 pages. And in total, there's probably about 40 odd bears in there, all different dresses and costumes and different things. One basic bear and lots of different ways to use it. So, um, yes, thank you for coming. And... Um, Please look out for Ros and I as the Woolly Felters. Go onto our website, look at the mouse adventures, 
look at our Etsy shop. We're out there and we're needle felting addicts. So it's www.woollyfelters.com. Go onto our Woolly Felter page and follow us. And, um, oh, things all back to front. Oh, <laughs> I just read the message. I am sorry about that. All the lettering's back to front. You have to read it in a mirror. But, um, yeah, I hope Ros has been answering your questions. And, um, yeah, keep needle felting. If you haven't done it before, give it a go. It's fabulous. Okay, so I'm going to finish now and log off. And um, thank you for coming. <laughs>